Monday night. Let's uh, get this up and running. And we're going to do some painting here. There we go. So good news for those that want to paint along, bad news for those that want to see games. So no, uh, no gaming tonight. Let's try something a little different. Let's try, let's try something like this. I wish this thing would hold in place. Let's try this. You guys haven't been paying paying attention. We are working on this is interesting. How do I do this? Let's see. Let's try. Yeah, there we go. Um, we've been working on our Russians here. Our medieval Russians. And this guy is nearly done. And then after he's done, we've got two more of these guys to do and uh which are just kind of generic other guys and then we've got the leader and the horn blower and the flag bearer okay so we're going to do all the generic guys first all right and uh so what's left on this guy so we put the known oil on here we put the known oil, but uh, we didn't come back and touch it up, so we got to do that. We got some pants to do, some boots to do, and um, the hooves, of course, that is the last thing. So, right, so pants. Um, I'm probably going to do almost like a, a white color, not to get too crazy out here. Um, always try to do something on every figure that's kind of like a basic linen color because it's going to make more sense. These tinted things, unless you rip them off of somebody that you just fought, uh, it's going to cost money and uh, probably not high on priority for these guys. These um, early Russians, these are the time of Alexander Nevsky, and um, these are Merleton figures in 15 millimeter scale, and um, these guys happen to, uh, in DBA 2.2, used to be cavalry, they used to be considered cavalry, and somehow the author had a change of heart, and all of a sudden they are now knights so but I, when i originally bought this army i bought it as a 2.2 army i bought it around 2010 i think and uh, it was for an event about that time and um yeah it was a 2.2 army list so i had to get some extra figures from uh I couldn't order them directly from Merleton because it's just so darn expensive. So I actually ordered them from somebody on eBay. I happen to have some um, extra archers. I needed an extra stand of archers that the, that the list didn't come with, that the box didn't come with. So, of course, I've already painted those guys. Let's, uh, 
No gaming tonight. Nope. Nope. Couldn't come over to game, and it's too complicated to explain why, but uh, I won't be gaming this week, and uh, it's not a big deal. Just don't want to get into it. And, uh, and, uh, won't be gaming this week or the next one, but we still will be doing hobby stuff, so. The good news is I don't have to do any editing. So, anyhow, by the time I go back to playing, these Russians should be done, and we can talk about what the next army is. Oh boy, I'm dying to dying to start on them. I almost want to walk away from these guys and start on the next army, but I've already done that once, so let's not do that. I'm going to do a little bit of pure white in here. I got a thumbs up from somebody. Somebody's happy we're not playing. We're just painting. <laughs> I'm going to take the opportunity probably in these next two weeks to go ahead and um, and pack all my troops and put them in the display case, or as many of them that I can, because they've been all over the place, and then uh, start with a fresh slate. But I think I'm gonna have to buy, I'm gonna have to get another one or more trays or whatever, because even though I don't paint very quick, I have consumed, consumed all of the space that that one gives me. All right, let's do some darker color boots because I don't want it to contrast. I want there to be some contrast between that and the um, yellow um, cloth that he's riding on. Um, so let's go ahead and do a dark brown. Are there any here that are alive? Let's see. So even though this is a paint session, if you guys want to throw in some Q&A stuff in there, that's fine too. We can talk about whatever you guys want. If I don't feel like answering, I just won't. <laughs> no, it's all good. One of these days I need to get off my ass and actually try playing basic impetus in the method that I was talking about using one stand. So have all the ranges, but only one stand, one DDA stand, and then uh, it's each unit, not four. Uh, I have no interest in playing with that many troops, but just see what kind of uh, cool things can happen in that game. I may hate it. I bet there's at least one thing that I like better than DDA, so just to give it a shot, I bought the rules, so.
every rule set has uh, people that like it and the and detractors. So. here okay swindling myself well we went ahead and when we did these this other guy and painted this guy's uh, the background of his shield in white went ahead and did the other two in white so we can roll right into after we do the horse and just throw throw a shield on there and build it from there So if you guys like to see these painting videos, there should be more this week. Like I said, I'm not I'm not particularly keen on painting without being filmed. I figure uh, if I'm not being filmed, I'm going to get zero interaction with other people. So might as well get some interaction. Some days are better than others, so. One of the coolest questions that uh, we got asked in our Q&A recently, um, I mean, there was lots of good questions, but the one in particular that I liked was, what obscure fact do you know? You know what obscure fact do you like to, that you feel like you know that you like to point out to people? I think the last one I said was that U-boat commander that uh, that got sunk by the dreadnought by ramming. <laughs> huh. It didn't serve at the Battle of Jutland, but it's the only capital ship that sunk a submarine. So far, that's come out. There you go. I'm covered. Ten years from now, when they find it, oh, this other thing happened in harbor. It's like, okay, well, so far. So, I've got these six other figures to finish. Oh, it's better than that. This is one of the six, so I'm done with this one. Five more, and then we get the then we get to reveal what the next army is going to be. Is there any army that you guys don't want me to do next? How about that? <laughs> Just for yucks. Armies I don't want to do. I don't want to do dog people, and I don't want to do the Eastern or the Pacific um, Native Americans. I have no interest in doing those three armies. Um, I don't have much interest in doing any Central American armies or South American armies, but um, definitely not the ones in North America. They just don't interest me. Um, but that's pretty much it. Everything else is um, 
pretty much on the table. Uh, is there an army out there that you're like, man, I hope he doesn't do this army because I don't want to see him. Or everybody doesn't. Although I'd say of all armies that I have, that's probably the most popular one are probably my Marian Romans and my Polybian Romans. I, I built them because it was for an event at Historicon. That's the reason I built them. That kind of, those were the ones that kind of broke my, well, I'll build this army even though everybody else is building them. I try, like to do obscure things. John Carter, my favorite Martian. There he is. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Xander's another army that's extremely popular. No interest in building them. Mitch already has them. Nothing against Alexander, just... No, if I had to run for an event or something like that, I mean, yeah, I can... I guess I can build them, whatever, but... I should build the Numidians and just play them and make them lose every time. <laughs> Actually, the Numidians are my nemesis, but my counter to them is my Armenians. For whatever reason, my Armenians are um, have encountered them several times, and I believe they've won every time. Swiss Burgundian. Um, you don't want me to see, do Swiss? It's a lot of the same stuff. Um, I've got four units of pikemen in, one of, in my French Ordnance B list of Swiss. I think it's four. Yeah, I think it's four Swiss pikemen. Yeah. Man, that fast blade army is insane. That Swiss army with the halberds. Whew, those guys are loons. And I mean that in a good way. They're crazy to see them fight. Yeah, speaking of Swiss, those are literally the, the first hurdle to deal with and uh, coming up with Renaissance rules is, is how big to make a Swiss pike block. And it's got to be at least 16 figures. And those guys are just, that's the queen of the battlefield right there, those guys. You got to surround them and plink them and whittle them down to size and get them from all kinds of different angles and yeah they're they're a problem to deal with Three separate bases. Oh, you're assuming I'm I'm gonna base them the same way. You mean like uh, 3D? Yeah, no, no. If I ever get around doing my rent, it's gonna be one stand per unit. So. But they're big. There's no reason why they can't be. Um, certainly four wide by four deep figures you got to be creative when you put the 
basing material on that. You got to start on one end and then work your way back. I think more than 16 figures on a stand and you're just like, it's a lot of figures for an army because I mean, it's, yeah. But anyways, that's just, that's a lot of play testing and stuff. And, uh, you know, just like I said, it's like, that's my motivation is not there because we're just so busy and we're getting even busier. So, um, we got plenty of work, plenty of work. I was the one that was wanting to slow down a couple of years ago and everybody got one except me. Just to catch your breath. Now, I'm pretty sure healthcare workers didn't get a slowdown either. It's like a testudo, how big it should be. Predictive Texas of pain. I don't know why everybody has a problem with it. I get I guess I have mine turned off. Um frequently I'll see a post, I think it's on Facebook or whatever, right? Like and it'll say something like, type the type the initials of your name and, and type in the 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 first things that come up on each letter on the predictive text. And I'm like I don't have that, you know, I don't have a spell correct um, or anything like that on my uh, phone. I probably disabled it. I like the I like the type things in different languages. So, you know, uh, it's not that handy for me. Predictive text. What's a bad prediction? <laughs> Wrong again. Okay, we have a scabbard to do for this fellow. I can't see back there where the, where the colors are. Let's, um, what do we have around here? Yellow, yellowish colors? Oh, we don't want to have anything to do with that. Let's go over here to this one. No, that's too close to the blue colors. Just one of those is greenish. I know what color I'm looking for. It's not readily accessible. Is it this one? Yeah, this is the one. The Russian brown one. You have sexes already, right? Uh, Mitch does. And he has early... So he has like warband Saxons. None of us have Anglo-Saxons. None of us have Anglo-Saxons. I've actually thought... Because of those forged in battle just came out with those um, with those figures for the dark ages, I did the math and I've got to buy like a stand of the I, I got to buy a pack of the blades from forged in battle, and a pack of like third, um, and like two packs of third and um, like skirmishers or something like that, and I could build the middle Anglo-Saxon army and the Anglo Danes. I thought about doing that, but. Uh, involves buying new figures. Vikings. Uh, Mitch and Luke both have them. And you can tell how often we played them. You probably haven't seen them in action. It's just too much of the same thing. 
It's just too much of the same thing. Um, everybody has Vikings, though. That's a very popular thing. I, uh, my next army is definitely going to be one that has some crappy manufacturing troops. So it's going to have some troops by some figures that are second tier. So you guys are going to look at them and you're going to be like, man, these guys suck. And they do. But they're going to look great. Just you wait. I know they'd look better if I bought better figures. But, you know, anybody could do that. All Dark Age armies look similar. Yeah, if you make them. If you make them. Um some you could say the same thing for the medieval. I know lots of people that say, "Well, I'm going to build a medieval army that can morph into all." I'm like, no, I've, I've got to build a German one and a French one and an English one. They all, you know, they all have to have their own spin and heraldry for particular stuff. That's what I wanted to look on today. So I've started reading um, the next book on my Audible list. And, it, and I liked the Crusade one so much by Dan Jones. I believe that's what his name is. I keep wanting to call him Dan Brown, but see, that's the, that's a different guy. Uh, Dan Jones' book. I've I've done the Plantagenet one, and um, the one on the Crusades, and I started the War of the Roses one, which starts before War of the Roses, which is. That's good, because honestly, it just sounds kind of boring to just do wars and stuff. But so it's giving me the background of, of uh, all that stuff. And I like I like those because I'll like hear something and go like, oh, I want to read more about this stuff or, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, I was going to look about the Armagnacs. They. Um, I'll look that up now that I'm thinking about it. Where's my book four list? Because they have hordes and stuff like that. I'm not doing medieval French next, but at some point in my life, hopefully, I will do medieval French to deal with those <clears throat> dastardly English that the hard rocks have. Not that I have anything against the English, it just seems like the right thing to say. Um, Where's the part that talks about Armagnac? Because it has hordes that they can have on the regular list. Oh, it's Jacquerie, what, what they're talking about, not Armagnac. I'll have to read more about that and see if that's what it is. I think they could have like hordes. And this one is, let me pull it up here. Oh, actual list. Medieval French. Yeah, it's in the time period here. It's the C list. Here's the Scots men in arms, okay. There's one. Oh, it's Free Company that's Armagnac. That's right. Where's that cheating list? I always used to call that a cheating list because everybody could dismount in that army. I knew I had seen Armagnac somewhere. Free Company and Armagnac. Okay. Okay, here it is. This list covers free companies made redundant by the Truce of Bordeaux, Treaty of Bretigny, and later the Truce of Tours. It represents army size accumulations assembling for major looting expeditions. Many returned to national service when war resumed, but others moved to Italy, including the English White Company under Hawkwood and the Germany com German Company of the Star under Sturz. 1444, 
The French King Charles VII hired 40,000 surplus soldiers of both sides, the Armagnacs. Interesting. Because it mentioned that in that book. I'll have to read more about it. I thought it was a bunch of hordes and stuff. Uh, it's not so exciting if it's not hordes. Not that I love hordes, but that's what makes it particularly interesting. Okay. Uh, they're a mixture of both. Knights and blades and stuff. I don't want to do free company because lots of people do that. Although everybody does Hawkwood, so I would probably find out what that company of the star is. But that's not who I'm doing next. I'm not, I'm not doing them. That's, that's too good an army. I need, to, I need to do a crappier army. So. To be continued. Um, right. And let's see. Let's do silver or bronze. Let's do the oh I was gonna do the sword here. Sorry, I got excited. I could I just remembered to do that when I got home to read in my book and I for I'd forgotten. Jeez. This thing blows. Alright, where is the oh I never opened it. Sorry, I got sidetracked here. Hey, it's you guys turn to watch me. Great. All right. You move out of the way. We don't want to get this anywhere else. All right, let's get some of this color down here. We don't need a whole lot. That should be enough. Let's close this up. Yeah, I see you live paint. Go away before you spill some more. All right. Now, let's find out where my black's at. Yeah, so far the book is really, really interesting. So we will see. I'm glad it has more stuff than just War of the Roses, because War of the Roses kind of smells like a civil war. So. I'm not a big fan of those. about Roos? I don't have the figures to do Roos. Roos would be cool. Roos have what, like three blade? They have like a blade general, two other blade. They, they're really similar list to uh, Anglo-Danes. Except I think they can have uh, one cavalry or something like that. I think they're a really similar army to the Anglo-Danes. Um, and I know the, the Roos figures, they have those big cool wooden shields. Like It's like I do not have shield. Well, go just grab, go grab neighbor's door. All right. I'm all set now, you know? You got these big door looking things with the little um, uh, big rivets on them. And yeah, cool stuff. The Rus, the, the Russian Vikings. They're Danes. Yeah, kind of. They're all kissing cousins, right?
how did that saying get started? That's probably has a, a bad, a bad starting, uh, starting thing. Just like more than one way to skin a cat. That's probably a bad uh, story as well. The whole reason to build a, a Danish army so you could say, Great Dane. Technically, Luke has a da Danish army. They're all paint picked one up. Every single one of them is painted the same. They all have like a, like a modern... Di no, it's not the modern Danish flag. It, but it's it's like a Scandinavian type flag on their shield. Like every one of them is exactly the same way. So like whoever painted them was like, I don't know, lazy, lack of creative creativity, whatever. But he's only used them a couple times. He's only used them a couple times. Honestly, they get forgotten, you know. Kevin out there in Arizona stand. It says that the roots are dressed in white. Yeah, we gotta mix it up a little bit, you know, little shades of white, just like uh, just like I did with the Irish. They may they mostly wore the saffron line line shirts, you know, uh, liney whatever I forget how it's called, Lena. I think that's what it is, Lena. Um, yeah, so I I played with the saffron color, so it's not exactly the same hue on each one. You know, so, yeah. Yeah, just don't base them in snow. That'd be really boring. They'd get lost in there. They would get lost. White troops based in white, you know. It'd be like uh, Napoleonic Austrians in the snow. All right, we got the back of... Uh, Got a brown here that we can use for that. Uh, yeah, let's get the leather color. Should be out here. I know this one will work. Did I actually get paint on me? Oh, geez. There we go. I don't want to look at that all night. Would have never happened if it was a Vallejo bottle. Even though I like Coke yarns better than any other paints. Paint-wise, but the eyedropper is the way to go. You heard they used urine to give their colors an off-white color. The Rus? <laughs> Probably. It'd be really hard to bleach that stuff. You know, once you roll around in the dirt, you're not going to have a pristine white type thing. Once you start wrestling bears like Putin, you're not going to be able to, you know, you're not going to have any clean clothes, you know. You have bear scat all over you. <laughs> Is there any armies you guys would not play? Or never build it? 
Like, is there somebody you're like, I'm never going to play those guys. I don't like them. Or, I don't like those folks. I don't know if there's anybody I wouldn't play because I don't, because of who they are. Just more of like the troop composition. Or like, I think one I brought the other day, like Toltec. I would never build a Toltec army. It's all blades and nobody makes figures for them. And it's not really clear what they look like. I mean, you could just pay them Aztec-ish, you know, but, um, you know, something like that would be like, I would never build them, you know. It's got like a couple strikes against them and nobody making figures for them is kind of a big strike. And they're not a very interesting army list. And you've got all of one troop type. I don't care what that troop type is, it's pretty darn boring, so. You're tired of Romans. Okay. I built, I built two Roman armies. I've, the last one I built was in 2007. It's been a while. I'm not in a hurry to do another one. Um, the problem with Romans is they don't find any. They don't fight anybody that I think is really cool. Uh, well, there's, there's exceptions to that, but, uh, you know, the coolest people that the Romans fought, and I mean coolest from the standpoint of, uh, as of, oh, I want to play those guys when they fight the Romans, is Pyrrhus, without a doubt. That's, that's, that's my boy. Um, you know, the Seleucids are also interesting, um, but Gauls and stuff like that, it's a whole lot of the same thing, you know. Um, uh, another army that's interesting, Mitch has them, though, is uh, Mithridates. Mithridates is an interesting army. It's a, it's a kludge up of different things. Um, welcome, Marco. You want every Byzantine army. I wonder why. I want every Spanish army. There you go. Um, why did it hold Kevin's uh, post? We're going to show it. There's nothing inappropriate with that. Arabs post-Muslim. I, I love the Middle Eastern armies. They are... They're really cool looking. They really are cool looking. You know, on one, you're like, ah, they're all going to be like, you know, covered and, and wearing... No, they're, they're really cool. They're, I, I like them. I don't do well with them, but... Um, but I like them. I've got, um, who are those guys? The uh, Mamluks. I got Egyptian Mameluk to do. And I, I'm, I'm waiting until a certain manufacturer comes out with figures for them so that uh, if I like them, I can go ahead and buy them before I build the army. Not like, oh, okay, well, my army's done. I'm not going to buy any of their figures. So uh, I'm not in a hurry to, to, to do them. Uh, I love my Turks. I guess those, I mean, they're technically not Arabs, but, but they, you know, Middle Eastern. Battle Honors, Tony Barton, Republican Roman Army, a while back. Okay. They were big, about 20 millimeters. Those guys have been around for a while. You like the armies in the Black Sea area, like the Bos Bosporans. Yeah. Those guys are neat. Those guys used to have four knights, four solid ox, um, and artillery, and then some odds and ends of things. Um, and there were... Uh, uh, a littoral army as well, so. Yeah, I had one guy that always used to face at the shows at Historicon, and he always would play that army. And um, I don't think he ever beat me with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh, well. He enjoyed playing it. That's the other thing is play something you enjoy playing, you know. Um, I like playing my Turks. I do terrible with them, but I still like playing them. Armies in the Black Sea area. So what is that? What is that limited to? Bosporan, right? Uh, Bithynian. Um, Cappadocian, technically. Uh, Mithridatic. The Georgians, I guess you could call them. 
they're a pretty solid army. Um, Galatians, if you include all of Turkey. That Galatian army would be fun. There's one period where they basically fought naked. And they make like naked figures for them, you know. You could have some fun with that. Be mocking people. All right, we're going to put these little rivets here. What else is Black Sea area? I guess Scythians. They're around there. Who was these are the Venetians that had a, a colony out there. One of the two. I get them mixed up. And not because I they're geographically the same, but they're uh, you know one of them. One of the two had had a colony over there. I think it was the Genoese, now that I'm thinking about it. Which, that is a long freaking trip from the Bosporus all the way to, from uh, Crimea. They had a, a colony over in the Crimea, is what I'm thinking of. And um, yeah, that's a long, that's a long haul from the Crimea to Genoa. Talk about taking a ride through enemy lands. Probably one through nine for sure. And um, you want all the Byzantine armies. Even the later ones. The later ones are rare to find. I don't think I've ever seen somebody play um, the really the, the rare one. You know you know what army I've never seen anybody play? Those uh, the, those guys that came in and invaded the um, the Byzantine Empire and set up their own little place. The Romanian Franks. I've never seen anybody play Romanian Franks ever. Yeah, never seen that. And all the little Greek splinter kingdom, the Moraean and the uh, yeah, the ones that are after like twelve. After the 1230s, you know, there was a couple of them in, um, there was a couple of them in Greece proper and uh, Trezebond and the Paleologans when they came back. Um, yeah, those, um, none of those armies are particularly bad. I just don't think that, um, I don't think a lot of people know about them. You know, a lot of people collect armies because they know who they are. But uh, Thracians, there we go. Alans, yes, Sarmatians, right? Bulgars. Avars, yeah. Okay, let's uh let's get some of this color and lighten up his face here. Do -do. I was reading another, I wanted to say it was the Byzantine podcast. I don't know if you've checked that out. You know, the History of Rome podcast, the guy stopped after the fall of Rome. He was going to continue on to the Byzantine Well, His stuff is really good. The guy that took over the Byzantine, in my opinion, his, 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 it didn't captivate me. And I say that, but I still listen to probably, I don't know, the first three, 400 years yeah, I got into like the 800s with him, but he's just very monotone. He reminds me of the author that did the um, the narrative, the Plantagenets. Uh, you know, I made it through the book, but it it just could have been a bet. It could have been better if they would have gotten a guy that, you know, maybe would have worked for me a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, um, in listening to his stuff. What was really interesting is I was not aware that the Sassanids had conquered Egypt. 
didn't hold it long, but um, they had conquered Egypt in, um, until Heraclius uh, fought it back. They had a one general there. What was his name? Shaharabad or says Shaharaz, Shaharazad or something like that. Anyways, it's supposed to be um, supposed to be a pretty good general. And um, those poor Sassanids, that's a really cool looking army, but they suck in DBA. They just, they just don't have any heavy, they don't have enough, they don't have any foot to hold their ground, you know, but um, those guys are cool. I've got figures to do Byzantine. I've got figures to do... Um, uh, Komnenin, which I would do uh, Manuel, because, uh, you know, everybody does Alexios. But I do Manuel, because that's my middle name, and, um, you know, and he didn't do so hot. But, um, yeah, he wasn't bad, but he's not the one that um, gets all the credit. But, yeah, that's what I would do. I'd do it around, what would that be? 1160, 1150. I've got the figures to do them. They're on the short list. You know, the worst thing about that army is, you know, the Byzantines, when you think of Byzantine flags, you think, man, Byzantine flags ought to be really cool, right? They've got, uh, they either have the Madonna and Child or some variation of that, or an emperor or, you know, uh, uh, some form of, Orthodox version of Jesus on their really cool, interesting looking banners. But something happened apparently during the Comnenon, uh, their banners are like really, really plain. Um, they've got like a cross on there and they're, they've got tails on them and the tails are like either red and white and there's some blue on there. It just looks like a smorgasbord of, the banners don't look really interesting, but you know, you can't, you kind of have to go with what they have there. That's kind of the only bummer about them but um yeah i've got those guys to do um i've got um and i probably have enough figures i would do a morph of uh the justinian um time period one you know with belisarius and um basically the first 500 years so i, I could do something between 500 and like 650 you know, by adding a couple of, uh, I don't, I don't think that the cavalry changed that much, looking wise. I think I could probably morph and do, you know, like three out of that, because Belisarius fights my uh, Ostrogoths. You know, he's a, they're, they're a match pair for each other, but uh, Belisarius is my man. Man, he got screwed. What I've read about him is he's. I would not, I would not have taken things the way he did. That, that guy, he got dicked over by everybody. You know, it's sad you hear about something like that. Um, Mithridates' son was Bosporin, yeah. Yeah, he had a little kingdom over there or whatever. Uh, the book on him called Poison King is really good. Um, I've Have I missed any teasers for the next army? No, you have not missed any teasers for the next army. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. The dialogue is going to be so good. Oh, I can't wait. I know you guys want me to tell you who it is, but uh, first I didn't want to tell you who it is because um, because I might change my mind. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to change my mind. I didn't just tell you who it is. You guys want to know who, what the next army is? Let me go grab a Coke and I'll come back.
Yeah, Bill Osirius got screwed, man. He was a loyal dude, and he got freaking... Oh, man, he got screwed over by his wife and the Empress, and... tell you what uh, how about I tell you I don't want to tell you what army is I want to show you the figures I want to show you the figures let me uh, let me get this guy done and then we'll pull out the figures and we'll talk about them okay damn it you're going to make me want to start start working on them no I'm I'm, I'm good enough oh it's going to be so good All I gotta say is, if I tell you what army this is, and I find out one of you guys starts building it before I do, a pox upon you. <laughs> uh. So normally I'm pretty disciplined about You know, usually when I, when I finish an army, I don't want to build something else that's in the same time period. So, like, if I was going to build, like, a, I don't know, Samurai, my next army is not going to be somebody that they fight. I've normally been doing that. I'm going to build three armies that are all tied into one another uh, of the next three. I have a feeling that, um, that that's the case. But we'll see. Of those three, I could build any of them in, in whatever order, but there's one that I'm going to build first before the other ones, so... That should really narrow down what it is. <laughs> uh, let's just... Let's finish this guy up and then we'll pull out those figures, because I don't mind looking at him again. And I'm not going to make a separate video about it. If you guys aren't watching me live, you guys won't find out what video, what army it is. <laughs> no, I gotta tell you, it'd be terrible if it was a tease, right? And ended up not telling you. No, I don't. I don't roll that way. My work has a lot of changes and. I don't wish a bunch of ch changes upon you guys. But it's going to have some. It's going to have some miniatures that are not very glorious looking. Okay, unpainted. Don't worry, they're going to look great. I. Um, that's that's my that's my. Uh, that is my goal to make these uninteresting guys look interesting. doesn't paint you uh you must be playing a game while you're listening to me that makes sense i'd probably do that if it was something if you're playing something grinding yeah i could totally see that i remember when video games didn't involve grinding man they were a lot better 
It seems like it. Maybe they're always involved in some kind of grinding or whatever. Sometimes you're grinding, you're not feeling it. I was playing, what was I playing the other day? The COVID game, The Division. And, um, you know, you just move from point A to point B to go do something. You don't fast travel and you'll encounter like random groups of people. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. But I can't play those games all day long like I used to be able to. It's just not worth it. At the end of the day, I don't have anything to show for it. I'd rather come on here and hang out with you guys. You know, I'm getting stuff done and why not, right? What do you say about Bill Sears? He was sent to Italy with 5,000 men to take down the Western Empire back, and he did it. Well, some of it. He did really well. He just got screwed by his boss, man. Oh, well. There's a book. I'm, I'm going to end up reading a book about him if I, if I end up doing that. But um, The problem with that army is if, he doesn't, if you're playing in DBA and he doesn't win terrain, boy, the Ostrogoths can really make his life really miserable. Um, because that army, I think, only has the only foot they can have. They may be able to have an auxilia. But they have like two blade and two Saloya. That's it. Everybody else is mounted. Uh, and like the early, the early version. So who's the other? Who's the other commander of that, of, of that army? Is it Narcis? Wasn't Narcis a eunuch? I don't know about having my general being a eunuch. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's almost like there's a couple things missing. <laughs> I think Narcis was a eunuch. Um, Um, yeah, if he loses terrain, and that's a pretty high aggression army. I believe it's an aggression three army. Uh, if, and the Italian Ostrogoths are zero. So they're going to win terrain, more likely than not. I know someone sent you those Polish a while back. It's not the Poles. Not the Poles. It's something different. It's something different because, um, you know, the Poles are cool and the Poles would be beautiful. But, um, and I've got Poles to do. I've got some old Falcon Poles. Some old Falcon figures by. That are Polish. And they're allies to my Hungarians. So I could just build. I don't know, a couple stands of knights and a fast blade and I'm done with the poles. I could do that too, but once I I was surfing armies a month ago or so and I came across this one that I never given it a second thought. I, I looked over this army like, yeah, I'm not really interested in them. And then I realized how much fun I could have with the dialogue. And I'm like, oh, I got to do them next. Because I put together, what I put together today, Dracula's army. And that could be a lot of fun, too, with the dialogue. It's a relatively fast army to paint. It's got, uh, what, three light horse. It's, it's, got a, it's got a command unit that either has a knight or a calf. Okay. And it has three light horse. And it has, like, five Saloy. And um, maybe a, college, a couple solid, like a, a blade or, or a fast horde or something like that. And that's it. So they'd paint up pretty quick. I've got figures for everybody except a banner bearer. So I could hit the ground running. You know, you could talk like Dracula the whole time. He could be fun, you know. He's an ally of my Hungarians. They fight the Turks. That's a pretty good candidate for an army. But. Just wait. I'm almost done with this figure. You're going to shit your pants. It's going to be so funny. I mean that in a good way. Huh? Um. 
Well, if I'm going to reveal who they are, I reserve the right to mess with them tonight. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you got to keep yourself on a short leash or you end up starting a bunch of things and finishing none of them. I've been there before. It's really unsatisfying. You have nothing to show for it, you know? Was there any of this white alive? Not much. There we go. I need a whole lot. I actually got so excited about doing this army the other day, and I was going to get an Osprey book on them. And um, I didn't want to wait two days to look at what information they had on them. So I got an ebook, which is, you know, not the same, but in some ways it's better, in some ways it's not better. It's always better to have a rule book, but you can bring it everywhere. So. If you feel like looking something up on the go, you have it with you. But I prefer reading a real, real book. But I could, I could get it immediately, and it was half price. So I'm not going to make a habit of it. But I did on this one. And as always, as most Osprey books go, it wasn't that useful, but knowing what's in there helps you make a decision because no matter what you end up painting, it's always, you end up always having to make some kind of a compromise or like, I don't know what the, what happened with this, but I'm going to make an educated guess and this is what we're going to go with. So you, and it just helps you decide an educated guess, you know, uh, what it is. So. Albanian looks interesting. It does, except I don't have those figures. So I I am building something that I already have all the stuff for. Which doesn't really narrow it down. It doesn't really narrow it down. So um Well I like the I like this guy's striped clothes. I really do. I like how that turned out. Alright. This guy's got some kind of leather gloves on, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and put a new white down. And then let's finish this guy up so we can do the reveal and we can start working on some of the stuff. I'm going to clean up some of the things because I already kind of know what they are. So, But we're not going to start painting any of the things. There's even green stuff that's going to be involved, but I'm telling you, it's going to be. No, I don't think it's going to be a good army. I'll be honest with you, but uh, I don't care. You know, um, I hope they do really poorly. So, so Mitch gets ahead of me and wins and losses, and he has to take over filming. <laughs> that's what I told him. I said, if you pass me, you're going to have to take over the reins of filming. This guy, unfortunately, I went heavy 
on the epoxy to glue his his lance down so it is way oversized it's like a big gloop there but i'll uh, i'll just deal with it little thing back here. This little dagger. Some hooks. People sitting off the edge of their seat. Well, I gotta get this guy done. Thing with several hordes. I don't remember. Maybe. <laughs> you gotta find out soon enough. Unless the power goes out, then you're then you're up a creek. Me too. Because I did find that bag down here. Because this will leave two standard guys left, and um, the other three. So I don't know if I can get them done by this weekend. We'll see. As I like to say, they'll get done when they get done. You know, I'm getting a lot more stuff done now that there's no conventions to or or tournaments to do things for than I was when there was a tournament to go for. Which is honestly pretty amazing. You'd think it'd be the opposite. But I think what it is is I need the painting therapy more than I did before. I need to paint this stuff up. Okay, we're going to call this guy done. Yeah, the shields look like crap. I think they do, right at this stage. They're just too shiny and stuff. All right. What time is it? Eight? We're not going to start another figure. So the rest of the time we're going to spend on this new army. Which, if you guys don't think it's interesting, is going to suck for you because you're not going to find it's interesting. Uh, just pay to the electric bill. So power shouldn't go out on my end. Okay. Well, we actually had somebody went down the road and slammed into a telephone pole, knocked out power for three quarters of the neighborhood. Luckily, I'm, we were on the three quarter side that the power didn't go out. So... That's always good. All right, let's let's get this into focus here. All right, and okay, 
So who am I going to do next after these damn Russians? Well, So I looked through here, and I was looking, since we play a lot of games, that really interesting things happen. Please be a Plains Army. I have no idea what that means. You speak a funny dialect out there in Arizona. Please be a Plains Army. You mean a step? It's not a step army. I would have no problem with step armies. I wish I had more. Um, not this time, pal. So, um, I was looking through here, since we do a lot of videos and really interesting things happen in videos, uh, it made sense to find an army that has some troop types that none of us have in any of our army, li in our, any of our army list. And that's what this, this, that's what this is. Let's see if I can put this on the computer and it not freak out. And press a keyboard down. So, I wanted to find an army I wanted to find an army that um, had some troop types that we'd never played before. And one of the troop types we none of us have is a litter. Now, I have a litter potentially in the Anglo-Norman army that I put together the other day. But, you know, Anglo-Normans, Mitch has Normans. Yeah, it's not very exciting. And then I came across an army that I think is going to be a hoot to play. And that is book three 77, the Pope. So that's who we're going to do next. Because I have several Pope-like figures. Now, the litter... <laughs> the litter can be on a 40 by 40 or a 40 by 80. Mine will be on a 40 by 40 because the geometry of when you go into combat with things on a 40 by stupid because you can only have one guy contacting on each side so you end up having a 40 by you have an 80 millimeter long side and only one guy can contact it so that is just stupid dumb okay so let's check out what we got here <clears throat> so we've got um so i'm going to make now there's only certain manufacturers that actually make a litter with him sitting on a litter. Um, I don't care. Mine's not going to be sitting on a litter. Uh, he's going to be he's going to be standing on top of. I may I may end up putting it on a ridge or what have you. Let's get a little bit closer so you guys can see here. Here is my Pope figure, and I don't even know who this manufacturer is of this one. This is what my Pope figure is going to be. Now we're going to doctor him up. We're going to put some green stuff. We'll give him a little Pope hat. Now it's not the the hat you're used to now. You know, this is, you're talking about like mid 1200s. Okay, so this is gonna be, um, you know, this is gonna be Innocent uh, the Fourth, I believe. So, because we've got these guys. Now, the interesting thing about this army is it's not a really powerful army, but uh, yeah, excommunication. Yeah, and he can run around saying, you know, get off of, uh, get off of that hill. That's the Pope's Hill, you know? Uh, he can uh, say, what? I'm innocent, right? Um, it's going to be a hoot. So this army list is aggression three arable. It's actually pretty aggressive. Um, it's a general that can either be a papal gonfalonier, which is a three knight, or a pope on a portable throne with papal guard, a litter. That's what we're going to use. I may end up building a knight for it, but I'm really interested in when you can have the pope walking around. Um, two other knights. Three mercenary archers that are saloys. Uh, two mercenary spearmen, that's two solid spears. Two mercenary crossbowmen, that's two solid crossbow. 
and then a, a, a fast knight or a German knight that is uh, that can dismount his blades. It can it can dismount in the middle of play, but it can do it uh, uh, as you go. And then a Roman militia, which is a seven horde, or infuriating peasants, which is a five horde. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do some angry peasants. So, uh, as the army will be built uh, initially, it will have a litter, litter general, um, two knights, three saloi, two spearmen, two solid crossbowmen, uh, a fast horde, and then um, probably. Um, the German knights, more than likely, because the French, yeah, mine will be the. So the whole point is, this is the guy who is going to get into a pissing match with uh, the Hohenstaufen, the Hohenstaufen's guy, Yellow Army. I don't know what that is. So, uh, Kurosan actually makes a figure for Manfred and. Friedrich the second so um, so let's get even crazier you ready for this this army can have several allies uh, including the Italian uh, communal Italian which really sounds kind of you know ugly honestly so nothing communal sounds good to me to my ears but they can have them as an ally and you can actually have two of them as an ally um, so, yeah, so I think I'm going to be doing a Papal Italian, Communal Italian, and, um, and a Sicilian list as well, all smorgasbordying together. Um, so, anyways, that's what my plan is. Um, and it's apt to change at any moment. So, if it changes, well, you know, Papal Colors. Nope. No, that's... So, um, so all the troops pretty much are mercenaries, right? So let's look at the spearmen. That's the first thing that we're going to do. And I don't know why I dumped all this stuff on here, but I did. Um, and this is all of the, these are all the troops that I pulled out that could potentially be useful for this army. So we've got some old glory knights here. We've got, um, yeah, like this one. Look at, look at these guys. But uh, we've got some old glory knights, some sp um, crossbowmen here. Um, we've got, uh, look at these old things. These are, um, tabletop game stuff. These guys are really small. I'm going to mix them all up together and they will look just fine. Mark my words. Yeah, look at these guys. These guys will paint up great. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do with lances. I may just cut them off and replace them with pins and then I don't have to worry about them ever bending. I don't want to spend all that time on them, and then they end up getting boogered up. These guys as well. See, these are, they're kind of a soft alloy. Yeah. So we're looking for a papal army around the mid-1200s. And um, so pretty much everybody's a mercenary in this army. The two units of spearmen are going to be from two different cities that fought for the Pope. They were inside the Papal States during that period. One of them is Bologna, and the other one is, shit, I don't remember what it is right now. I forget which one it is. Had on a tip of my tongue. I've already decided who they are, but I don't remember what the other one is right now. But anyhow, so they will have that on their shields. All the spearmen will have. Yeah, we're going to have fun with this. With this. We've got a pope. Uh, we've got some of these battle monks. I don't know exactly who the guards are going to be, but look at these guys here. Now, they look like it's carrying some kind of an early firearm. But it's not, it's almost like a really long mace, a mace of unusual size, and he's got robes and stuff like that. So I don't think that this weapon is something that I particularly want to paint or is appropriate, so we may just replace them with spears. I'm not sure where it's going with all that, but, uh, you know, this is just kind of brainstorming. And uh, 
we're going to do the spearmen first just so we can get our um, foot in the door. And I've got spearmen of two different variety. All four figures on each stand will both be the same. They're just going to have the, um, the symbols of the two particular cities. Um, Bologna, and I forget which one the other one is. They're both red and white, though, unfortunately. But I guess that's kind of the theme with the with the um, with most of those guys. Look, here's another here's another priest. I believe this guy is a um, thistle and rose guy. I have no idea who the hell makes this figure. It's a nice casting, whoever he is. It almost seems like it's a Merloton. But this is what I'm thinking the Pope is going to be. And, um, you know, we got some old crossbow. We got some really small bowmen size wise. Um, let me show you where they're at. Here we go. These are um, I believe these are Naismith. Yeah, they are. Because it even says Naismith on the bottom. But these are really, they're almost like 12 millimeter. That's okay. They'll look just fine. Um, got a wagon here. Just everything that was potentially for this. Um, oh, look at this. Here's a guy playing the drums with. A, oh, he's going to be on the. He's going to be on the litter. This is a, a command stand for. I want to say the Teutonic Knights. Look at this guy. Yeah, we'll put. There's going to be a lot of guys on that 40 by 40 stand. I'm hoping I can fit them all on there. Um, hopefully, I can fit them, fit them all on there. But this is going to be a freaking hoot to play. Now, I don't know how successful it's going to be because it's um, it's kind of weird with the litter. It's it's, come, it's almost like a, a wall where you can't pass. But you know, um, yeah, we got. We got monks. We got uh, some lady. I don't think we'll include her. Oh, look. It's a little boy. Well, we know he's going to be on litter somewhere. We're going to have to have fun about talking about that. If you get easily offended, you probably don't want to watch these battles. <laughs> but that kind of goes without saying. But anyhow, that's who we're doing next. Is the freaking Pope. So... And um, ought to be a hoot. Ought to be a hoot. I'm looking for where my spearmen are. Okay, here's one group of them. I may not have pulled them out. Meaning they must they might be mixed in with something else. But all these guys, I'll pull those out in a second and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna replace all the uh, all the spears on that. They're just they're too bendy. They're way too bendy. Okay. I said stay up. Yes, it's definitely before the Swiss guard. Yellow, gold, and white. Ah, uh, that's those colors are later than this period. That's uh, that's much later than this period. I mean, you could do it and you wouldn't even be able to say. The only people that, that used during this period the yellow and white was the Kingdom of Jerusalem. They, uh, they had that color on them. Maybe I didn't pull the other spearmen. Anyways, I have two units of spearmen and they're all differently. I'll show you what these guys are and we're going to replace the... We're going to replace the... I just kind of haphazardly when I was digging through here the other day just seeing what I need to get and basically don't need to get anything. There's a there's a figure that's that's in that same pack with comes with uh, Manfred and uh, Frederick the second is this bishop like a battle bishop looking guy. So that's probably who we'd use on um, for that. You know, people like talking trash about minifigs. And let me just show you something. Minifigs sometimes kick ass. And here is a model of an oxen from minifigs. Look at the shape of this. Now, yes, you have to clean it up, okay? But it has a, I love, I love the styling of this thing. Uh, it looks really good. 
So, um, yeah, box cart. I don't know if it, that'll work its way into something, but um, it does need to camp, so I don't know. Um, having a litter doesn't get you away with not having a camp, but... Yeah, there's only a couple of figures that actually have the Pope on a litter, but, you know, it's just on there so he can get a better view of the battlefield, so they just set the thing down and they're... And he's standing on top of it. Now, obviously, we will end up um, grinding this down because I don't like having these figures standing on other things and you have their little base showing. So we will grind this thing down, but... Um, and during this period, what they were known for is having um, is I may not, I may I may not be able to use this figure. We'll see because he's got a hood, and uh, they didn't really do that. But we can cut that thing down. Is they used uh, they have this uh, across the front of them, almost like this, uh, almost like a tie or whatever, and has a bunch of little crosses and stuff on there. So we can make that stuff out of green stuff, and his hat also out of green stuff. Yeah, I guess the other unit of Spearman I didn't bring down here, but let's take a look at these guys and see what I'm talking about. The other ones have a different type of uh, have a different type of shield, and they're also you know these basic communal Italian looking Spearman dudes. Now these are old tabletop games. I believe you can still get these figures by um, alternative armies, but first of all, the spears are too damn long. They're almost like pike pike shields pike spears and they're way too bendy way too bendy so um we will just replace these with um pins and make them you know about 10 foot long but about that long and uh yeah so this will be the arms of uh of uh, bologna which is um just a red cross on it and um yeah these are pretty basic looking figures but i think that they will they will paint up quickly and they will look good um Double whammy. So, and I've got another unit of um, of these type of uh, spearmen that have a kite type shield. So that'll be another another city that is in the Papal States, and it just happens to be also a red and white theme. So it's going to be a red and white theme to this army. Hopefully, they don't look a little too Romanish, but you know they are Roman Catholic. <laughs> uh, anyhow. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have fun excommunicating people and, and so forth. So <clears throat> the uh, we'll be able to make fun of this guy. These uh, popes of this time period were were anything but nice fellows. But um, so, but that pretty much you know that's what we're gonna do next. So um, just gonna be a hoot, I think. But um, yeah, so. They can have, um, they can have a lot of different allies actually. Um, but two of the allies that they can have. Oh, and they also fight. Um, who do they fight? They fight. Um, they fight uh, Joe's army. They fight um, his uh, Eastern Franks. Of course, they don't look like this. Eastern Franks are already gone. But you know, I'm, my guys are going to be look at, have a look around. Uh, 12, uh, 1250 or something like that uh, time period. The communal Italians, uh, they can have them, they're basically a, a knight general and wagon. Um, then they have another knight, another knight or a light horse, two more communal spearmen, uh, solid spears, um, or solid ox. Oh, yay! Uh, two solid crossbowmen or eight crossbowmen, two hordes, and a war wagon, a mercenary knight, or a saloy. And you can actually have two of those as allies. So when you use two allies, you end up replacing um, four of your units in the core army. Okay? Um, and you get the general from each one of them, and then the most common one. So for maximum flexibility, um, what you want is an army that, like an army that is a really good ally is um, uh, Joe's army, it's the later Tang, because they can have two of this or two of this or two of this or two of this or two of this. So if you have a bunch of unit types that all have the same amount, then you can basically pick and choose whatever you want. Um, it's when you have something that has like six of something, you're screwed having to pick something like that. So normally it's 
Uh, an ally is the general's element, whatever it is. It doesn't behave like a general, but it is a type of that of that general. Uh, the most common unit type, and then uh, the one that has the you know the the, the most common one in the listings, um, and um, and then the last one is any one of the things that you haven't picked yet. So, but when you have two allies, it's the general of each, and then the most common one of both. Okay, so if you use this with two allies, you would either get you could get two command wagons. So you could have a litter general and then an ally with each a command wagon. So you basically can have like three litters in the army and two different ones. Well, you know, those guys can't go into combat, but they're really strong defenders. You know, talk about none shall pass. You know, um, and um, one of the worst DVMM lists. Really? Oh well. Communal or papal? Um, but then when it comes. It comes to picking the most common one. These communal Italian allies can have. You can pick a spearman, a javelin, a crossbow, a four crossbow, an eight crossbowman, or a horde. If you take them each one, so some interesting things. It's going to be kind of a defensive army. Like communal time research one city state. Yeah, well, the communal time will be one, but one thing at a time. We got to get the Pope done first. So, yeah. So anyhow, that's that's what's coming up next. Unless I change my mind. Now, nah, just the fact that we're using a litter, we don't have an army with a litter. You know, so or a command wagon. So what does that really limit limit me to? Okay, well, I could either do uh, Kazars. Don't have any figures for Kazars, okay? Um, who else has who has a litter? Oh, the um, uh, the Anglo Normans. Uh, you know, Mitch already has Normans, and, and it's a good list, but eh, you know, um, needs artillery. Well, you know, I can't have every army with artillery. Um, I want to make them different, so that would definitely be different. And uh, the Pope is. The Pope is going to be a lot of fun to play the Pope. And yes, I'll order a little Pope hat for me so I can wear that while I'm playing the army. Of course. Jeez, what'd you think I was going to do? Like I said, it's going to be a hoot. It's going to be a hoot. Um, I know. I know. I'll have to start drinking red wine then, and I'll get a little chalice. I'll, I know. You can really go like crazy with it, so... Um, a special ring that Mitch has to kiss if he loses the battle. I got it. Yeah, all of those things. There's just there's just way too much dialogue that could be a lot of fun. Um, so not a really powerful army, but definitely one that's different than um, than than some of the other ones. So anyway, so that is coming up next, supposedly. Aren't you glad you waited? You guys can go to bed now. Let's go back to these damn Russians. All right. Now you're wearing a big happy hat now. <laughs> oh, just the dialogue alone. But most of them are going to be second tier figures. There's not going to be any like glorious looking miniatures in that, but they're going to look good. They're going to look good and they're going to have a lot of flavor. So, um, Right. So we need to, even though he painted this white, we need to give it a little bit more, another coat of this. Uh, let's get this here. I'll have to dig through my get those other spearmen there they, they see other spearmen that are listed there under um communal italian spearmen or whatever by tabletop games they've got like kite shields and same type of things 
You have priests in your ancient British army, yeah. Yeah, that's just going to be too much fun to play. You know, that's just going to be way too much fun to play. But as far as litters go, you know, they make that litter that's the, Zystom makes that litter that has um, Antigonus One-Eye on it. But Zystom figures are really good. And that guy's particularly fat. And I don't necessarily have a problem with my Pope being fat, but it seems pretty dominant. Also, the figures that are carrying him are really big and they're going to need a lot of modification to them. Um, and it's difficult to find figures that have, that are holding their hands just right to be able to pick something up. Um, plus, it's probably going to take up a lot of space and force it to be on a 40 by 80. And I really don't want it to be on a 40 by 80 stand because you get that weird geometry. You can only have one guy contact on each side. So it's going to do weird geom geom geometrical things on there that uh, I'd rather not, you know, play. So, um, but anywho, coming up next. Because there's some weird stuff with litter. So litters are really, really weird. They are um, the only... They are only... Um, they move like a blade. They basically are a blade, except they don't advance. They can't go into they can't go into close combat or provide overlaps, kind of like war wagons. But they don't shoot. They fight as a blade general. They're only one pip to move. Um, they so it's so their numbers are a six versus foot, a four versus mounted. They. Only die if they're doubled or on ties against enemy foot if they have at least two of their edges in close combat. So in other words, if they're sitting here and they're fighting one guy, that one guy has to double this to, to push it back or anything. I don't think they recoil either. Uh, yeah, they don't recoil. Um, and um, so they would have to double that guy, which is going to be damn near impossible because remember, he's a six. Okay. So, worst case scenario, he's going to roll a seven, okay, without being overlapped. And um, you got to double a seven. So, good luck with that. Um, or on a tie, if you have two edges in combat. So, like if you've got one unit engaging them to the front and then another one to the, on the side. And then, you know, it would be, uh, you know, you would get the minus for that one. And then you would, uh, if you tie, then he dies. So, if you can protect this flank, he's a pretty solid dude, you know? Ties happen all the damn time, so that's, you figure, oh, that's, all, that's not that likely. Yeah, it's pretty likely. So, uh, put him in the middle of the line somewhere, and, uh, and he does bump up other guys, so you could put those crossbowmen next to him, and you bump the crossbowmen in, into three, as three against foot. I've looked at all that stuff. And it's not that it's just some kind of super army, but it's a way I gotta play them differently, you know? Um, good stuff. Good stuff coming up. Hopefully. Hopefully. All right, let's go ahead and get the dry brushing of this, um, of the chain mail over with. Okay, well, we know we're going to do it. No 
point in beating around the bush. Now we're going to give this guy a bronze helmet because the last couple of them have not had that just to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, and most of the figures in this papal army are going to be compliments from that, that batch that was given to me by Kevin Mello. So, um, yeah, if you guys know who makes that priest figure, I'd be curious to know who it is. Not because I want more, but... We're going to have to take that hood off of them, though. That's easy enough to do. I've used very little green stuff. It's not that difficult to use in the amount that I'm doing. It's not like I've got to sculpt a completely new figure. You just add a cape or a turban or something like that, and it's pretty easy to do. And it's pretty durable. I don't think I've had an issue with any of it falling apart or anything like that. But, you know, I got about a week to change my mind or so. There's a chance I could do the Sicilians. I want to see that litter in action. See what kind of weird things happen when the litter is involved. No, oh, he's definitely not a Magister Militant figure. He's big. How's your Italian Godfather accent? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's definitely an Italian pope. Well, during that time period, they all were. And, uh, you know, hey, get off of the pope's battlefield. I'm going to excommunicate your ass. <laughs> I never did see Godfather 3. It's all in a courtroom, though, so I think which is like not watching that shit. Um, I get enough trickle down courtroom stuff that which works its way to me. I don't need to go out and find it. That's for damn sure. Um, right, so this guy is, we just did this type of a horse. So what colors did we already do so we do not repeat that? We got a brown one. We got a dark brown one, we got a lighter brown one, we got a black, oh, nope, not that guy, that one's not painted, and dark brown, well, I'm not opposed to putting this guy on a white horse because I'm not so sure the general is going to be on a white horse, I don't remember what I'm going to put him on. Do you get rivers? Yes. Yes, I can 
I can put rivers with this uh, with an arable army. Yeah, that would be pretty. That could be nasty. It's regression three, so they probably aren't going to put terrain down. But yeah. And there's ways to get. You could actually get the general to advance into combat. What you got to do is you got to do crazy stuff. Like you put that horde and you put them in front of the litter. Okay, the horde is going to advance. And if anybody's behind him in a column, they'll advance too. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's an artillery piece. Um, if you have a guy in front, well, I actually have never seen that happen. But if you put a guy in front of an artillery piece, like uh, this impetuous, like a blade or a horde or something like that, and you put the artillery piece right behind him, now they're a column, right? So and it, obviously, assuming they're touching, if that horde or that um, that blade wins the combat against foot, they're going to advance. Well, against anything, the horde's going to advance. They're going to advance, and all of a sudden, that anybody that's in that column along with them is going to advance. The column could be seven units back deep, you know, and um, you know the horde isn't going to die from recoil. So as long as they don't get shot at, um, you know, you could get. You could start working that guy into, you know, into combat or something like that. So that's big numbers. I've, I've used a blade general before. That's big numbers. And then you're talking about a blade general that doesn't get quick killed by knights. Um, can he kill knights too on a tie? Oh, that would be, that would be, that would be uh, brutal. I'm not sure that he can. You can bait people. Oh, man, that's just, you know. Hey, you got a little prayer for you. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's do a very light-colored nut. Let's do a very light-colored horse, okay? Let's grab. We're not going to grab white. Is an element eliminated if they get recoiled into a camp? I think so. Does it matter if the camp is still occupied by its followers or not? I don't know. I could look it up. You want me to look it up? Yeah, I'll look it up. Let's look under recoiling. I've gotten a lot better at finding out where rules aren't. <laughs> so I don't even look at those places where I know it's not at. Recoiling. Okay. If the recoiling element is element is elephants, all friends or enemies met that are not in the BUA or camp are destroyed. A recoiling or pushback element whose rear edge or rear corner meets terrain it cannot enter, a battlefield edge, friends it cannot pass through or push back, enemy or a city, fort or camp ends its move there. So if you get pushed up against a camp, as long as you've got some kind of movement left, you stop at the camp. An element already in such contact with any of these cannot recoil and is destroyed instead. So if you're up against a camp and you're forced to recoil, you die. doesn't matter if there's somebody in the camp or not. Now, what you can do during your turn, uh, assuming you're not in close combat, is you can just move back into the camp and you take over as the camp defenders, which is what you would want to do. Um, because you'll be too higher. And a camp is really interesting because that's one thing that they changed. A camp is only worth one element killed. But if somebody's there defending and they die, you know, because um, all you got to do is outscore the person in the camp and, they, and, and it's over, you know, and the camp follower is gone. Um, the, you know, the, the camp defender is gone. So um, you do get a plus two bonus, but you use whichever number is higher as the defender. So, for instance... Um, if you have a pikeman, uh, a pikeman when he defends in a camp is a four against everybody, plus the two, so it's a six. Um, because he's a three versus foot, just a single pikeman, he's a four versus mounted. So when you're defending, you end up taking whichever number is higher, and you use that as the, um, as the number in the camp, plus two. That's a little different. Um, and that's kind of, you know, hidden back to work. 
Oh no. Better you than me. <laughs> yeah. The um have you gotten a chance to play DBA Rick or are you just a rules collector? I don't know if there's anything wrong with that. I uh You can also probably play Hordes of the Things, I would imagine, with all those uh, fantasy guys that you have. Fantasy, uh, what are they, Battlefields of Man? Is that what it is? Yeah, you have a crap ton of figures for that. I believe those are all alternative armies. They look pretty cool. Silver gray, that's kind of white. What's wrong with this one? This is the color I want to use. I want to use this color right here, right here, right here. What's this one? Pale sand? Pale sand. Let's use this color. And let's see. I'm going to pretend I'm at, what's the name of that place? Um, Cold Stone. And see what we're going to use our mix in. Nah, I've got too much of a red tip to it. Just a standard brown is probably fine. Chocolate brown. No, but you own Hordes of the Thing rules and a Celtic army. Okay. The Celts. The Celts are a lot better in DBA 3.0 than 2.2. A lot better. Did I mention they're a lot better? They're a lot better. They uh, they have a fair amount of mounted now. They could have like five chariots or something like that. Chariots, cab, that kind of thing. I believe they're the ones that have... I believe it's them and not the ancient British. The ancient British must have them as well. But they have... One of those Celtic armies has a unit of guys called the... I don't even know how to pronounce them. Gaysati, uh, something like that, and um, they are um, they pay, they would run around naked and painting themselves blue. Like talk about a conversation piece. That would be fun. Not to do it in real life. I mean, just to play with you know those figures. Um, if you're gonna do it in real life, make sure you paint yourself red. <laughs> Merloton has a perfect Pope figure called Wizards and Priests. Why'd it have to be Merle's time? Let's see what it is. I'm not opposed to buying them. Let's, uh, oh, I minimized that. All right, let's see. You said Merle's time, huh? Must be in their fantasy range. Merle's time. I like that. My minion is looking for stuff on there. Hey, give me ideas. I'm going to... Let's see. Let's go here. It's probably in your fantasy thing, isn't it? You have new Italian Wars codes? Did they come out with new stuff? What scale is this? This might be a big, big scale. Yeah, it is. They make 25s too, but that's not what... Let's look at fantasy 15 millimeter. I didn't even know what they made fantasy stuff, honestly. Ooh, a war mammoth. Nice. Why isn't the default to show every single page? You know, how many do you want to see on each screen? Well, let's see. I have a good computer. Show them all to me, please. Um... What did it say? Is wizards or something? Let's let's work our way over to it. And Kurosan better not come up with a Pope figure as soon as I'm done with these guys. I don't see them on here. I don't see them on here, Kevin. Wizards and Priests on the Merlot Town. I'm on their site. <clears throat> Let's look under special miniatures. 
No, that's a war mammoth. Yeah, what's that under? I'll take a look at it. Let's look under. It's not going to be under Muslim or Etruscan or Roman or Italian communal, maybe Crusades, Condottieri. Just show me all of that. Okay, here is that Italian wagon. Oh, it's showing me all kinds of stuff on here. Let's, uh, let's go here. Fighting Friars. Nice. What are these? Jesus, this thing's incorrigible. Cool. It's nice. This amount of nice fighting. I have some of these knights with kettle hats or whatever. These guys make a these guys make a figure of Frederick Halford Hovenstaufen as well. Boy, they have a nice. Oh, he looks really cool. Hovenstaufen. Uh, yeah, I don't see them on there. So, uh, Kevin, let me know what they're listed under, and I'll take a look. Wizards and priests. Yeah, I don't see them on here. You said wizards on there, so it's got to be under their fantasy. I don't see them listed here. Dwarves of the Mountain. Goblin Warriors, Archers, High Elves, High Elf Warrior, High Elf Command. Dwarf King. Cleric in Command. I don't see that figure there. Uh, let me know what li what they're listed under. I'll be happy to take a look at them and uh, and see what exactly we're dealing with. Necromancer, Death Lord, Wood Elves. Yeah, I don't know what they're listed. Let me know, Kevin, what you found them under. I'll take a look at them. Model ME20. I know, but what's it list under it? Oh, is it under the 20 millimeter figures? That won't work. It'll be too big. found it. I don't know how the hell, I don't know what these guys are under. Merloton Fantasy. Ah, uh, yeah, that Pope's pretty good, but I don't think that's 15 millimeter. I don't think that's 15 millimeter. It's probably Fantasy 28 millimeter. Let's see. Yeah, Pope is good. find out what those guys just have too much detail to be uh to be 15 millimeter meo 20. when i click on it in stock it's merliton fantasy It 
doesn't say. I have a feeling those are. I have a feeling those are bigger than fifteens. But that is a cool figure. But he's got the wrong kind of hat. They that that's a better hat, but they. Uh, yeah, it's just under. I don't think it's fifteen millimeter scale. Um, feel like I'm close to putting in an order with Alternative Armies. They released some new Landsnet. Oh, I remember the days when I would put that on every single post when I was painting those guys. Harvard here's not across those that are looking fantastic. Yeah, they just came out with those guys. Yep. Yeah, those guys did. Those guys did me right. Uh, with uh, replacing the war wagon and everything from my um, my Hungarians, so kudos to them. You know they make some older style figures. Okay, um, I like them all. All right, let's get some of this stuff on here. All right. Um... This is going to be. The horsey color. All right, let's just cover this whole thing in this color. No time is it anyways? Ooh, it's nine. Ah, we'll we'll finish this horse before we cut off. And it doesn't matter that this doesn't cover great over black because I'm going to put other shades on there, other colors on it. It's not an issue for me. The more important thing is I leave a little bit of black in between all the stuff. So I don't want to come in there and black line all that. I might as well have it so that's the default. And we just have to paint to the edge of the whatever it is. You might want to do it a different way. This is the way I do it. I have done it. We'll do it. Continue to do it. Miniatures has a priest with a cross. That's the name of a company? Classic Miniatures? A miniature company I've never heard of? Wow. How dare they? We'll finish this color and then we'll take a look for Classic Miniatures, see what we're dealing with. Can't be a very big company.
the guy I have will work fine. I got to make a special hat for him anyways, because they used a certain kind of hat during that time period. And it's not the one you normally think of that, you know, uh, that's more modern looking. It's just, um, it's almost just like a, a cone, so to speak. I could also just put one of those little doilies on them. They use those during that time period as well on the top of his head, but uh, it's a little bit more impressive to have something that has some height to it. All right, I can't, I can't stand it anymore. Let's see what this classic miniatures is. Fifteen peasants and priests. It's not a big company. That's okay. Let's see. Let's uh, minimize this. I've never heard of them before. Why is Bing is my searching thing? I I don't I don't Bing. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I I know my way around Google. Let's see. Classic miniatures. Classic miniatures home. Miniatures list. What? No pictures? Actually, they have quite a few things. They just these folks need some pictures. Maybe this isn't the right classic miniatures. Facebook page for them. Hopefully it's not this guy that has a Facebook page because this guy's got some Well this guy had an accident or something like that. Oh man. All right, I'll check it out at a later time and see what it is. I'm pretty happy with that with that guy that I have. I just uh, figured I'd show him to you. So, but uh, there might be a guy that's even better. We'll see. Uh, I know Kurosan makes like that battle that battle guy. Um, he's like a battle uh, bishop or something like that. So, that would be that could be kind of cool for the nightstand. But. Ooh. Man, this horse has a big old head. <laughs> With a head that big, you should milk this guy. Tell you what, I'm 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 fading. We're gonna we're gonna call it right now. So glad for you guys to stop by, and we got to do that reveal. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And um, good times are coming. We got this guy and this guy and these three to do. And that's it. And that's all the Russians. So not much. And then we can start doing uh, popey things. So. We, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be, we will be back uh, later on this week and uh, pick up where we left off. So until then, happy painting, folks. Good night. Bye-bye.